the city of Richmond, Virginia was not only the capital of the Confederacy during the American Civil War, it was also home to the largest concentration of hospitals anywhere in the South. With so many battles occurring in close proximity to Richmond, as well as five railroads converging there, and a large number of soldiers encamped in the area, a constant stream of sick and wounded soldiers flowed into the city throughout the war. Richmond responded by transforming a wide variety of buildings, including private residences, tobacco warehouses, factories, hotels, churches, schools, even a saloon, into hospitals. By the end of the war, the city boasted five large military hospitals, some capable of housing thousands of patients, 28 general hospitals, each of which could treat a few hundred patients, and a number of private hospitals. The Museum of the Confederacy's collections contain many documents and artifacts relating to dozens of these medical facilities. On the eastern edge of Richmond sat the hill of Chimborazo, which was named after an Ecuadorian mountain it apparently resembled. There, the largest and most famous of Richmond's hospitals was established. At the outbreak of the war, soldiers camped on the hilltop and built a series of wooden barracks. Once these soldiers were sent to the front lines in northern Virginia, Dr. Samuel P. Moore, Surgeon General of the Confederate States of America, appropriated the buildings and established Chimborazo Hospital in October 1861. Under the care of Dr. James B. McCall, it could handle about 3,000 patients at any given time and sprawled across 120 buildings, including its own bakery, ice house, and soap factory. Approximately 76,000 soldiers were treated there by war's end, giving Chimborazo the distinction of being the largest Civil War hospital in the North or the South, indeed, in the entire world at that time. Winder Hospital opened on the western edge of Richmond in 1862. Another large hospital complex, it had space for thousands of beds among its 98 separate buildings. It boasted a library, bathhouses, employees' barracks, 125 acres of farmland, its own fire brigade, and offered transportation to downtown Richmond. Jackson Hospital was to the north of Winder Hospital and closer to Hollywood Cemetery. It shared some of its activities with Winder Hospital and opened in 1863. Soon, it could treat about 2,500 patients in 49 buildings. Robertson Hospital was a privately financed facility which opened in the residence of Judge John Robertson in downtown Richmond at 3rd and Main Streets. It operated for nearly the duration of the war with occasional closures. It had space for only 22 patients at a time, but ultimately treated more than 1,300 soldiers with only 73 deaths, by far the lowest mortality rate of any military hospital during the war. This was largely due to the insistence of the use of soap by the hospital supervisor, Sally Tompkins, who became the only woman officially appointed as an officer in the Confederate Army. Some hospitals were known both officially and unofficially to treat soldiers from particular southern states. Sometimes they were created because citizens from those states feared their soldiers would not receive top-notch medical care from strangers so far from home. Other times, they simply wanted a way to directly provide financial or medical assistance. States such as Alabama, Louisiana, Texas, and Florida all established individual hospitals for their sick and wounded in Richmond. Among the best known of these state hospitals were those for Alabama, which were established by an act of the Alabama legislature in November 1861 and appropriated $30,000. Juliette Opie Hopkins, wife of the appointed hospital superintendent, ably ran the three hospitals on behalf of her elderly husband. She also fundraised for the hospitals and contributed nearly $500,000 of her own money. The system of hospitals in Richmond during the Civil War may seem like a makeshift patchwork of facilities, but working together they treated tens of thousands of sick and wounded men 
enabling many of them to return to their regiments and eventually home.